Hey, this is Cone from Sum 41, and you're listening to Epic Footnote. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Matt, and welcome to the second part of our interview with Cone of Sum 41. If you missed the first part of the interview, make sure you go back and listen to that one first. Really cool interview that we had with him, and really just an awesome guy. Now, in this part of the interview, we talked to him a little bit more about what the future looks like for Sum 41, what it means to be going back out on the road, what does it mean for All Killer No Fillers anniversary that's going to be coming up, and what the future sound of Sum 41 is going to sound like. Are they going to continue down the path that they did with Order and Decline, with which is no secret, one of my favorite albums of last year, one of my surprise albums of last year too. So are they going to kind of continue down that path? Are they going to go down a different road? You got to listen to find out the answers to all of these questions and make sure that wherever you get your podcasts from, make sure that you listen to us and you let us know who you want us to interview next. You can tell us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, at Epic Footnote. Check us out on YouTube as well. I hope you have a good one and I'll see you next time. Later. There is something we're curious about, not to make you feel old. Uh, Matt's going to joke that like I love making people feel old, but you do. Uh, you know, 2021 marks 20 years since All Killer, No Filler came out. And I'm just curious. I mean, I know, you know, times are crazy, as we talked about in the last episode. Has there been any talks about Sum 41 doing something special to celebrate? Maybe when either, you know, while we wait for the, everyone to go back on the road or even just like once things clear up. Has there been any discussions there's been discussions about like anniversary type stuff, like, you know, a, a tour, possibly releasing some like B sides from back then that we never put on the record, you know, old demos that no one's ever heard before that never made the album. It's strange because we didn't get the tour this year and we had, we were ordering to decline and we didn't really get to finish the tour. Like, we haven't really talked about what 2021 is going to look like, whether it's going to be let's finish the order and decline tour or. Well, it's all killers anniversary, so we have to move on to that now. Um, We have had no discussions about that yet. I'm sure Derek probably has some thoughts about it, and I'm sure he'll be reaching out as we get into the new year. But yeah, the the idea was to to ride out this year on order and decline, and then go next year into some kind of anniversary thing for all killer. Because we we've done that in the past with Does Look Infected, where we go and do a Does Look Infected tour and we play it front to back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, never done that for all killer and uh, that it would be fun but we'll just have to see uh, you know to be honest like we have our whole next year's booked like they're booking it like we're doing it um our management our agents and stuff I, i'm still kind of like skeptical whether it's going to happen you know how can you do a festival with twenty thousand people in this in, in, one, in one field sweating and breathing and uh yeah. crapping and you know spitting on each other and you know it's 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 so I'm kind of skeptical that touring is even going to resume next year. I hope it does, and mm-hmm. obviously it's going to take a vaccine. Hope hopefully not a Russian one, but a vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> let let us do it. You know. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it's so true. I mean it is kind of scary to think we went from really fast in the beginning to oh I can't wait for you know the shows to come back this summer and the fall. To like, not even like knowing if it will come back in two years. The reality is so sad and scary. I don't get my hopes up about anything. Like, you know, I'd love to be able to go back on the road, but I don't want to. I don't want to go and jeopardize everyone's lives either. Um, Yeah, our band does not want to do that either, and we're not going to go just go out and just like play shows if people are going to get sick and potentially die, and you know infect their families and all that stuff. So, you know, we have to wait. We do have to wait until we can do it safely. Um, and, you know, not to end it on a bummer, but if there's one word you could describe the entire experience, touring, recording, that whole album cycle, what word would you choose? Like the early days. Like just like touring behind all killer, uh, no filler. Uh, oh, it's for that record. Um, uh, surreal. And because because we were so young and um, we got to tour with a lot of bands we looked up to and we got to meet a lot of bands we looked up to just within one year or one, one and a half years or two years or whatever. I'm talking about like no effects, Pennywise, all these bands that was the reason the band started. You Rancid and Green Day and, you know, all these bands, Offspring. Mm-hmm. 
within within that little short span of time, we were with them, like we were like peers, and we were all of a sudden, uh, you know, a part of this scene now that we um, loved when we were teenagers. So it was super surreal for us. And um, I remember at the time thinking, like, I can't even believe that we're meeting these people and playing with these people, and people know, you know these bands know who we are now. So it was really, really surreal. I wanted to actually ask about Order and Decline because it seemed like some 41. Let me say it this way. It actually opened my eyes again to the band because I heard the album and I'm like, I haven't heard Sum 41 sound like this in years, but that's just me. Is this kind of the direction that Sum 41 is kind of headed down, like a more heavy direction? Yeah, I don't really see us going back the other way. I feel like we, the reason we play the music we play and even back to All Killer was that's the music we were listening to and that, that's how good we were back then. So like... <laughs> Order in the Client, I feel like we're we're just getting better and we're just evolving as musicians and we like hard mm -hmm. and we like playing hard and heavy music now. Um, and we always we always did and even in All Killer, like we, we were more into like the punk thing, I guess, back then, listening to more punk rock stuff. Even even though we were listening to a lot of metal too, but I guess we just we were playing what we were playing and it wasn't for any other reason just of what we wanted to play and we, we've learned now, like, when we play those songs, like Order and Decline songs or the heavier songs, we get more of a kick out of it, and I think our fans do too. Even though when we play Fat Lip and In Too Deep, which are more poppy songs, right. the crowd is easy too, but, you know, that's a nostalgia thing and it's songs that they grew up on or whatever. But I think, yeah, I don't, I don't really see us going back the other way at this point to, you know, we're not going to start doing In Too Deep, so I don't, I don't really see that happening again. Okay. So, yeah, to answer your question, I think we're going to probably stay on that that level. And there's no complaints here. I, I, like I said, it was one of my surprise albums of last year. It was actually one of my top albums of last year. It was great. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that. 